Hi, Brandon. Okay. This is one of my favorite videos that we ever do because it shows all the innards. This is mine too because I what get to say a bunch of words and act like I know something. Oh, get you, smarty butt. Okay, so <laughs> what is this that I'm looking at? Well, this is a was a class nine. <laughs> The Ranchilio Class 9. The Ranchilio Class 9 <laughs> is now in the junkyard. <laughs> so we uh, have taken off the case. This is the back view of it. Yes. Yeah. So we are in the back. So the front, okay. all those buttons you're used to is up here. Mm -hmm. This is the easiest way to kind of see it right now to okay. open it up. So I wanted to get in there. So show me all the parts, the components first, and then maybe you can walk me through how the water path, like yep. when you pull a shot, what happens. Cool. So okay. basically this right here is your boiler, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, if you're used to seeing any type of home boiler, you'll see how much larger this yeah. is. <laughs> Um, this is what controls everything basically. So the, all of your water, everything is going through here. Okay. Okay. These two protruding things are what's called your heat exchangers. Mm -hmm. um, we've gone over this before, but again, it's a cylinder and you can see it really well here. So it's a cylinder right there mm -hmm. that's self-contained. It goes all the way through. Um, and we'll get to it in a second here, but all the way at the bottom that comes right out. So you can see the same one underneath it. Okay. Um, that is completely self-contained. So the water that's sitting inside this boiler mm -hmm. is not the water sitting inside that tube. Okay. Okay. Um, two group machine gets two different heat exchangers. If I this go machine goes up to four groups, um, how does that change my boiler size? Um, it's, so it's gonna get larger with that. Okay. It's, I believe the four group one is like a 17 liter boiler. And this is an 11. This is an 11. So it just kind of goes up incrementally with yep. the number of groups you add. Okay. Yep. And that's for temperature stability, but also for just sheer size. I mean, yeah. I couldn't run four heat exchangers in this <laughs> exactly. boiler. So you have yeah, no steam power. It would be, <laughs> the boiler would come up to about here. It's, it's quite extensive. Okay. Um, all the way through your boiler, basically, you have all these components that are coming through. So mm -hmm. we already went through the heat exchanger. This coming off the heat exchanger is what sends water up to our group heads, which is how we make espresso. Okay. Okay. We've got this one right here coming out the top, which that's going to our steam valve. Okay. Okay. And there's another one on that there side. There is another matching one on this side, which is actually right here. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to go kind of left to right for you here. Okay. This is our safety belt. This is what saves lives. Yay. Um, if anything goes crazy, your boiler, your boiler heating element just stays on going, going, going. Mm -hmm. This is going to spray everywhere. It's going to stop the steam from building. It's okay. going to protect you. Um, this is what's called your anti-suction valve. Mm -hmm. You can see it going up right now. We have no steam inside of there right now. If there was steam inside of it, this would be up. Mm -hmm. That equalizes the pressure so we don't have any type of negative pressure, anything sucking anything back. Okay. Okay. If that is not working, then we can potentially get pressure that can suck stuff back through your steam arms mm -hmm. in, in other, any leaking area. Okay. Little thin one. This is actually our gauge. So if you remember, um, if you're watching any of our other videos, you'll see there's a steam gauge that's up front. Mm -hmm. Tells me how many bars of, of of pressures inside. And that's, that's how where it's reading. reading. Okay. okay. This right here is actually going up directly into our hot water valve. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is a block for a hot water valve and we'll get to it again, but that's cold water. This is hot water. Okay. This is the matching steam arm mm -hmm. that goes out. This right here is our um, electronic safety. I'm sorry, uh, electronic pressure step. Uh, so this machine what? allows oh, you okay. see this here and what it's going to do is trace down into this. Okay. This machine allows you to set the pressure of your boiler directly oh. by electronics right at the front of the board. Okay. Um, in a more mechanical one, you'd see this big black box, mm -hmm. whereas this reads it right to here. This says how much it is and it's a wire going right back into the board. I see. Does that make sense? Yes. And then this is our water level probe. And so this decides how much water, what this, all this is, if you can see it. Mm -hmm. I'd have to loosen. I don't have that with me. This right here will go up and down. And so, so it's telling, it's, it basically will um, engage the pump to put more water into the boiler. Yep. And what it looks like line. is basically this. So mm -hmm. as it starts going down, if I want my water to there, mm -hmm. I set it right to there. Then and it's once like, it hits it, shoo, got it. it off. Okay. Um, and then as we come out to the side of the boiler, we actually have two pieces that are just not being used. Mm -hmm. And one that's down here, which is actually, so if I want to get rid of all the water in my boiler, oh, okay. I can do that. And then here's my pump. Yep. So let's, I guess let's start from the beginning. So okay. the way this story always works is how does water, water starts from somewhere. So water's coming directly right mm -hmm. here from the outside, from your water pump or from your line or whatever. Okay. Um, and we're basically going to come up directly in and we're going to go into our pump. Okay. First point of water contact from the outside world starts with our pump. 
conveniently with little arrows down and up. Yay! Can't mess it up. Um, the pump, this, so this is the actual pump and this is the motor right here. Okay. The motor actually spins the pump. So these two have to work in conjunction. Mm -hmm. um, there, all this basically is, is a big spinning uh, valve and mm -hmm. it's, it's gonna be turning this inside of here, running water that way and on up. So, Okay. Okay. If this gets seized up, you can, you know, basically when you ever have a pump issue, it could be a pump, it could be a motor. It could be one of the two. Got it. So my water comes up in here and then it's heading down this And then it's going to head down here. No matter what machine you're on, this always goes to some form of water block that's going to distribute it. So you okay. want to get down low for this one here. Um, or can I cut from the side? You or? sure can if you want to. Can you see me? Mm. Hello. Okay. So the main water is going to go into this block. I can't. And on this particular... Oh, there we go. Okay. On this particular machine, we actually split water three different ways. Okay, mm -hmm. so, and it's kind of hard to see it right now. Let me see if I can get a little light back there for you. Um, so this is going to split it three ways. The first way we're going to go, which is this way right here. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to go up, and I'll show you in a second. That goes directly to our um, to our hot water. Okay. Okay. Um, let me get my light back out. I just hit a button. Uh, to your hot water our, spigot? The hot water spigot, yes. Okay. So that's going to go in, and that's that part I showed you directly. Uh, this is actually the, the cold water the cold. side I told you. Okay. Okay. This one here going up is going to go up into our group heads. Mm -hmm. So this is how we get water to make espresso. Okay. okay. This one, which is a little solenoid connected to it, you can see. Mm -hmm. That one is what's called our inlet solenoid. That mm -hmm. puts water directly into the boiler. Okay. So if you could spin around to the left side for me here, and I'm going a little bit blind, you can see that line come up. You can actually come in right in here if you mm -hmm. want. You can see ah, that line okay. from that cylinder, it comes right to here. Got it. So that works in conjunction with this water level probe I just showed you. Mm -hmm. When that thing, when the water level probe says, I'm out of water, mm -hmm. that little black box solenoid down there turns on and lets water directly into, into the, the boiler. Okay. So that's how water makes it in the boiler. That's its whole function. Got it. Okay. The second part we need to worry about is that one that was going up, which mm -hmm. takes me up to here. This is into our heat exchange side. This okay. is what's going to make espresso. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that line going up was actually this one. I know you can't really see it going from there, but if you were mm -hmm. to trace it up, it's this one right here. Okay. What that's going to do, it's a two group machine, so we have two flow meters. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we did not have a volumetric unit, if we had a semi-automatic unit, these would not be here. These are only for volumetric units. Okay. But the pipes would still be here. They would just connect the pipes. I see. Okay. So this, when we talk volumetric and you say, how does it know when to shut off at, you know, two ounces, that 145 pulses that you saw, mm -hmm. that is actually this. There's a little um, impeller inside there that's spinning 145 times. Okay. And then it shuts itself off and that's how we get it water volume, you know, volumetric water. Okay, so that's why you're not saying like, it's not saying, oh, I've just delivered two ounces. It's just like, I've rotated X amount of times, yep. I'm done. I'm done. I okay, quit. got it. All right. <laughs> Gotta go home. <laughs> so Put a fork in me. That is why you have two of these. Again, three group machine would have three, three four group four. would have four. Okay. Okay, so then it comes in and it goes back out again. So that's its whole purpose. It just cycled just to count. As many times as it needs to, it was programmed for. Yep. It's okay. an accountant. All it does is count beans. Oh, a little water counter. Okay. <laughs> then my water is going to go back down and now we're going to go into the heat exchange. Okay. So we're actually going to trace it down and you can see on both group heads, I'm going down here. So yeah. water's out and it's going to come back down. So now we're going to head back down to the bottom. If you can, can you see underneath there? Uh, somewhat, yeah. Okay. But so yeah. these are those two tubes that we are just tracing down. Okay. Okay. Both of these tubes Hold are going to go into the bottom. Hold on, let me see if I can get... Can you get under there a bit better? Yeah. Okay. So both of these tubes, these are the two tubes you're talking about, mm -hmm. both are going to go into the bottom of the heat exchange. And then they're coming Which through that, that little cylinder. tube. Yep. Right here. And then they're going to come through this tube okay. all the way up. So it started cold in the bottom and mm -hmm. now it's going to be piping hot up here. Okay. Then it's going to go from here and we're going to trace it directly into the group head. Got it. Which is where you're going to use it. Okay. okay. Now the other trick to group heads, the way we keep these things stable is they have to rotate water. So if it's just sitting there hot, not being in use, mm -hmm. that water would effectively just get hot because we're boiling water. Mm -hmm. Heat would just keep coming up. So we would never be able to maintain stability. I see. So what we have to do is we have to generate that water. It has to cycle. So if it's not being used, it goes directly through to another gigantic um, copper tube right there. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. It's probably easier if we go jump over to this group head. Okay. That's that same outlet. Got okay? it. Okay. So on this group head, it was water in. Mm hmm And then, I'm sorry, this is, this is water in right there. Okay. This is going to be water out, going back out. 
Okay. Um, and then what we're gonna do, and you can scan down right here, you can see this gigantic copper tube right there. Sorry, where? Right there. Ah, so okay. Click on. Yeah. That is a tube that is now going to send this water back to the bottom of the heat exchanger. And so it's just going to keep cycling. It so it's it's never it's rapid going through and it's never going to get too toasty. It's never going to get too toasty. So we're going to spin that at just the right speed, and that's Ranchillo's engineers to figure out okay. to maintain temperature. Got it. Um, so again, if we can get back down, I don't know how well you can if you can really get underneath there, but you can see the return tube is actually on the side, so it's right there. I could probably get them from right there. Mm. Can you see anything? Mm, not really, <laughs> no. but okay. So the return tube yeah. comes okay. back in from that side. I see. And then it just mixes with any cold water. But now we can keep this constant flow going Okay. from the group head through your heat exchange so that none of the water gets too hot. Cool. Does that make sense? Sure does. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So, and then over here, I just have all my my little magic electronic box yep. where I this where your, the brain of the machine is. That's your brain. Okay. Um, this time the brain's on my side. Huh. <laughs> Meow. Um, and then over here is your main electronics, basically a bunch of relays and stuff like that. Um, the only other real thing to get into is is kind of the series of uh, solenoids that happens actually mm -hmm. up. Which is, it's, I believe on this particular machine, it's down, it's down below, which okay. you can't really see. You can see it right there. See that little black box that yeah. I'm tapping? So that is a group head solenoid. Okay. Um, we've, I think on a lot of our videos, we go over what a three-way solenoid yeah. is, um, which is to relieve all that pressure. Mm -hmm. That is what's happening there, too. So that's a three-way solenoid on these machines. Okay. Um, again, it's needed there to make sure we push some of that pressure out. It's, it's, it's also the blockage to make sure that no water is going through until I hit a button. Mm -hmm. So that's when you hit that button and you hear that clicking noise. Click. That's, that's your three-way solenoid that's activating. Click the water it. in clicking again to turn itself back off. Okay, cool. Other than that, that's the machine. We've got steam arms right. up top up here, a whole mess of wires, electronics, and everything like that. But it just boils down to really... The it's, boiler. It the boils down to the boiler, huh? It boils down to the boiler. Cool. You're so slick. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Brandon. Thanks, Kat.